Fala fala hia tuko fana ngong mai ya kai ke he. Ta wala tala tu tupu hela taung dui ke he. Manga hana if ka mua. Ko ai ahoi ni a fini ho ko mai ya taki taki hendi sila ni ko John Key ke mo tu. Mai hanam de ko he fana nga o tu bi ko ke pasifika. Ni ko ho ko tu ai ki Samoa tonga. Hi Samoa mo tonga mo fko si ai ki ni we. Ko mua ni ko ho ko mai ko mai ke ke fereveya mo te ulilifu ni ko ho ko tu toko fo ta hai mo mo to palimia ke fa ko fleve yo mo lo tolu mo o a to ke ha fa ngi ai e va la he ma le va le le ne ko fa ko lo lo hi mo fa fo ko fa i manga ho fo ke to to ki ta ki he to he ta ki ta ki ni silani pia fo ki ni mo to palimia mo to ke fa i mana to hanga o ye ke fa fitu ya nga ha ni we mo ni silani mo to nga ho fa ko lo lo hi ne ko lang ma ta ki ai he to to we ko mo le to ko o to ai foki ke ke he fale fono ke fa tu ta la hanga o ye ke he fa lo to mna ki anga hani silani ke la tai mo niwe ne ba tu ta ke fa ko loanga ne me fe mnga ho ke fa ke smanat me tali hu hu mai he to ta ngata fa pu lo ta la ne ko o to ai ke he ofisa fa li tali fenonga ke ta ha foki e fqalwanga ta kai ne ku fqata ta kai ke la ta imolo tu ne ku a ho kuma ke motu tu fenonga tu ai ke ke ski se tu ai ke folo tum tanga hua tu ngai ya em ta kan hua sala ke fa ngai hua hila o tu ke ta ngai ni we ke ski se mataka bi fo ne ku amara ke ta langa e ang fo fo he ta fa ni ki ki o tu he ha ha ku pu mo e o tu fo ki ke he fa manu ni wei ya to a fe tu ke ono nu ai ke ta ma ta ngua ta la nga vaka ha va sele mo ki ki se fo ki ke fa ngang ngang he vaka ku tu ku tu ki ta hi ku ma ngua tu pou la ne ku o tu ai mo ka ki a ni nas to fa ka to to ro ngang ke wa tu ku fle ke fle wei ai mo to fa no a nga to lu ngi pli asi ne ku ma ke fo ke lu tu ke hu wa tu ai fo la to hu hu ke to ni mai e john keys ta ha foki fo ho loa ngane ku ho ho ku a tim tukau ni ki ai ke la tu tu fa tu fa ngan he tu pale pale ha lu tu lu ni ku ua tu he lang paskata holy rally of the rock ni fo ho ku ai ke fale ta fo prosea mo ua tu foki ki ki siki se tu ai ke fale tel fenonga matave resort ke ha ni a fini fo loa he ta ki ta ki ko john ki to fo ke ni silan ta ha po ni ua lima e million ta la ke he lima ta kala mata ya tu wai ke tu fai fe nonga vaeva mo to pu hala mo wa malo hila ni ko hang hang ta ki kala ta me mo tu ko tu ke fe nonga tu wai e tu ke ta ki ni sila ni me hanam ta ko he mo le im ta hala ono ke he a fi a fi ni a fi ko e pung pung ni ne ni ko ri liu e to li li fu he fo no e ke pu le ke fo no ta li mai he fo no anga fo pa he o se to wilianga ni ko fi fi li mai ko to fa e fo tun fo no pia fo ke me ma to palimia ko fo no anga nei ni ko mai ke ke tu ko to to fo ma anga to hi mai to fo no anga mai ma hina ya ni wali ke ho ko to ai ga pelila ko fo ai loi he ma to palimia ko to ta la ni to hingo halo to lu ni ko fo mo li mai fi fi li ai ke to ko to fa anga ke he fo no i ki pu le he mo tu ta he to he ko ta ki ni ko tu wa to ai he li li fu ni ke pu li mai alu fu to ke lo hanga o ya ke ta fo no anga hem ta ko commonwealth parliamentary association australia mo to pacifica ko ta fo to anga pa wa ki fo ki ni ko tu ko ai ke fo no anga ke la to me fi fi li anga he to hu kui ke la to me to komis nga hua he fo no ke pu le ke hong fo mali ma ki ko to komis ia ko ko misi fa le ko misi ha ka ha ke he to pe ko misi to hi fo la ta la ta ne fa ki se fo ki fa tun fo no han fi ri anga ke na ke mai ke ke tu ko to hi ngo he to li fo e ke pu le ke to ko misi a to mo mai e ta li anga mai he to li li fo ia ko fa tu hi ngo fa lu to li li fo mo a ma na ki anga to nga hua hua e to mo to ko ke la ta mo to ko to fa anga ne Hello, hello. You are listening into Radio Sunshine's news bulletin for today. In our news, yesterday, Newer welcomed New Zealand's Prime Minister John Key and his entourage as they completed the Pacific Mission visit for 2014 that began in Samoa, Tonga, and concluded in Newer. Prime Minister Key was welcomed by 
the premier and officials before an official opening of the extension to the Hanan International Airport where both leaders were able to share their views on the relationship between New Zealand and Niue. Prime Minister Key and his delegation were then taken down to the Falefono where bilateral talks were held with Premier and his cabinet before a media stand-up held at the New Tourism Office where media personnel were able to ask questions to both leaders. A special round the island or half the island visit tour was arranged that started from the solar uh, solar energy project at the New Power Corporation and they drove on through to Taonga Niwe. The new site for the new primary school at Buliasi before heading through Hakupu past the Vaya Nunu Farm and making a brief stop to the Avasele canoe project where a demonstration was also held down at the ramp. At lunchtime they were served an island feast at Arlina's before continuing on with their program to meet with students of New High School who were also able to pose questions to the Prime Minister. The delegation then went on to join the presentation of prizes for the Rally of the Rock participants at the New Golf and Sports Club and concluding their tour at the Matavai Resort before returning and departing at six in, just after 6 in the afternoon. Prime Minister Key was also able to announce while on island that New Zealand would be investing $1.25 million to support tourism and renewable energy over the next five years. Now looking at our new stories from the region, Global warming is causing trillions of dollars of damage to coral reefs, aggravating risks to tropical small island states threatened by rising sea levels. The rise in sea levels of some islands in the Western Pacific was four times the global average with gains of 1.2 centimetres a year from 1993 to 2012 due to shifts in winds and currents said the United Nations Environment Programme. The study released to mark the UN's World Environment Day on the 5th of June said a warming of waters from the Indian Ocean to the Caribbean was damaging reefs by killing the tiny animals that form corals with their stony skeletons. Some people in small island developing states are considering moving inland due to rises in sea level that are causing erosion and bringing more salt onto farmland. Nauru has reacted with alarm over new reports suggesting that the West Antarctic ice sheets is melting faster than initially thought. The reports indicate that global sea levels will rise by an additional four feet in the next few centuries, condemning homelands and other low-lying island nations similar to Nauru. Nauru Ambassador to the United Nations Marlene Moses said that woefully little has been done to address this potentially catastrophic threat that is in all likelihood irreversible. Moses has emphasized how critical it is for the entire world to work together as the decisions which affect SIDS first will eventually affect all nations. Two more opposition MPs have been suspended from the Nauru parliament amid claims the government is trying to avoid scrutiny. Three opposition MPs were banned from parliament in May and another two, a former president Sprint Dabuido and Squire Jeremiah, were suspended on Thursday for behaving in what the government claims was an unruly manner. The pair had opposed the earlier suspensions of Roland Kahn, Kieran Keke and Matthew Patsiwa. Patsiwa says with just three opposition MPs left, the government can operate unchecked. The Registrar of Political Parties, Alfonso Ngelu, said his office was behind the proposed constitutional amendments which would see politicians from the ruling party contest the Prime Minister's post after a successful vote of no confidence. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill also denied his government proposed amendments and said it was part of work by the Integrity Commission. Post Korea reported that the government proposed amendments and members were advised of the bills in a circular dated the 28th of May, issued by Vela Kunivaro, the National Parliament Clerk. K. 
Candip MP Don Pollier and Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil criticised the proposed amendments and said the opposition of Prime Minister should be open to all members of Parliament during a vote of no confidence. A coalition partner in the current government told the newspaper on the condition of anonymity that it was sceptical about the proposed changes. Two asylum seekers convicted last month of riot and unlawful assembly at the Nauru Regional Processing Centre causing $60 million in damages, received their jail sentences. The first accused received a reduced sentence of two years and five months for unlawful assembly and riot, and the second accused received a reduced sentence of 11 months for riot. Handing down the sentence for the first accused, Resident Magistrate Rupate Kabelawa said the appropriate starting point for unlawful assembly in ni- is nine months imprisonment, but two years for the offence of riot. In the case of the second accused magistrate, Deba Lawa said the appropriate sentence for the offence for riots is one year. The charge of unlawful assembly comes under Section 61 of the Criminal Code of Queensland and the charge of riot under Section 63 of the Criminal Code. The defendants have 28 days to appeal their sentences. A big-eared bat has been rediscovered in Papua New Guinea after dropping out of sight for more than a century. Two University of All- of Queensland students caught a female sample of the species in mid-2012 while conducting field work in a forest in the country's central province. It did not match any bat known to exist and was later determined to be the species not seen since the first and only specimens were collected by an Italian scientist in 1890. Catherine Hughes, one of the students, says the initial aim of the field trip was to record the sounds of known bats in the area, but a much bigger discovery was made. The bat known as Ferrotus imogene is listed on the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List of Threatened Species as critically endangered, possibly extinct. Construction has begun on the $30 million worth of New Zealand government-aided solar power projects in Cook Islands and Tuvalu. Much of the Pacific is reliant on burning imported diesel for power, which is not only costly but also bad for the environment. Foreign Minister Murray McCulley says the construction will result in 95% of the electricity in Cook Islands and Tuvalu being supplied by solar energy. Tauranga-based company PowerSmart is tasked with the construction that will see eight solar generation systems built on the Cook Islands, totaling 20.5 million, and four solar hybrid systems in Tuvalu at 13.9 million. PowerSmart recently completed a similar project in Tokelau, which has now made the island 100% solar powered. Construction there cost 7.5 million and was also helped made possible by the New Zealand government. The Tokelau project sees the island save nearly 1 million in diesel costs every year and reduces its CO2 emissions by over 1,300 tonnes. The Papua New Guinea government will now put the 2 billion US dollars petrochemical project as a priority. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill announced O'Neill and his team to Japan this week met with high-profile executives of Sojitz Corporation, the company that has proposed to build a gas chemical production project using natural gas produced in the country at Konimbada Petroleum Park. Petroleum Minister Nixon Dubin and Hala Governor Anderson Aguirre confirmed a proposal on the project was already before the government and said that both parties are now working on the 15% domestic market obligation for the project. There is our, our regional news stories as well as our local news bulletin here on Radio Sunshine for today.